Your gaze wanders over the solemn stone face that overlooks the shore. For the briefest of moments, it seems as if its eyes come alive and lock with yours. The eyes, stone grey, turn pale green. They mesmerise, then enchain, then lure you in. That shrine seems to have brought me here. What is this place? Quagus, where are we? No leaves, no trees, no soil. This is horrific! How pensively our shield looks to ask away, shield. Indeed, Quack. Amid the soundless air of this alien world, a phantom-like figure awaits you. She too is a lizard, as you can tell, but there are telltale details in her features that conjure memories of incense and mantras. The onyx eyes, three-layered crown, and feathered shoulders. You recognize her from the statues that stand tall in desert sands. She is the goddess Zol Stissa, greatest of the seven. Red Prince, welcome be. May your words command the rivers. May your hands direct the winds. Fire of sun and rock of earth. May they serve you like faithful slaves. Red Prince, it is an honor. To your surprise, the goddess sinks to her knees and bows before you in reverence. Modesty? Hmm. It doesn't quite become you. She rises and considers you with deep-set admiration, like one would a work of art. Red Prince. God child. Truest ruby of all realms. Tell me, do you know why you are red? Yes. The tale of your birth and the love born to you by the sun will always remain a part of your mythology. But I think there is another reason for your brightness. You are red, red prince, because all of you is heart. You are carnage, and you are concord. The lord of war and lord of wisdom. You are lust, and you are love. You are passion personified. That is why I saved you from the all-consuming sea. Why I soothed your lungs with my breath and placed you gently on the nearest shore. Red Prince, you are greater than all others, for you are the sum of all others. You are the Ur Father, the life shaper made manifest in a man. I would see that man a god. I bow before you because I am a goddess no longer, robbed of my powers by the usurping divine. We, the Seven, are gathered here in these horrid halls of echoes. Dead spirits vying for rebirth. But none of us will be the one. One of our children instead. A god woken like you. I have chosen you. You are to be my champion.
A moment's hesitation unsettles her. A flash of darkness clouds her gaze, then lifts. It is a wish I have forsaken. It is a banner I must pass on. A great battle is being waged. It is the twilight of the Seven, and the day to dawn of the One. The powers of all divinity must unite. And they must unite in you, the paragon of lizards. Our kind must rule this world, and none other. None of the primordial slime that made it onto two legs by nature's oversight. Take up the mantle, Red Prince, and all will be well. All will be well. As she speaks these last four words, the outline of the goddess shimmers, shakes, then transfigures into an all too familiar shape. She stands before you in the guise of her, the woman you've been dreaming of for as long as you can remember. She is unparalleled beauty, and her skin's as red as yours. Yes, here she stands, your deepest secret, your deepest desire. She whom you've longed for since your soul slipped into consciousness, and you lock eyes with her. Just look at you, Red Prince, standing there in all your silent eloquence. I could drop a stone into the well of your heart, and it would take the span of a son's life for the little traveler to hit bottom. Such is the depth of your devotion. It is a good thing for the Life Shaper to possess such affection, for she too, your secret love, has her part to play in downfall and divinity. Now of divinity, let me give you a taste. She steps close, puts her hand on your chest and leans in. Kiss me, my prince, for I am her. Kiss me, for I am your one true love. The kiss is long and sweet as rose water. As it endures, you can feel a whole new power invade and expand your spirit. There. It is all Stissa who has withdrawn from you, in her own godly guise once more. No. Find your true love, and forget my kiss. Remember only the blessing I gave you. Cherish this purest of pearls I have given you. A droplet of untainted source, and a promise of things to come. I bless the very water beneath your feet. Now you may wield that power for yourself. So take it with you back to our beautiful world. There, use it to make that world yours. Of course you have, but they can wait. What is life without a little mystery? Before I let you go, though, there is one more matter we must touch upon. You are traveling with company, yes? No, not friends, rivals. They are God-woken too, and may be courted by the Lesser Six. But you will be a god, none other. Smile at your fellow wanderers, but ready your knife, for its time will come. Oh, and Losa? Lovely little Losa. Just kill her now, and be done with it. So, now we must part with fire in your soul and resolve in your mind. We'll meet again, Red Prince. Always will I walk beside you. The goddess steps back and waves, the warmth of her lips still lingering on yours. Then, sudden light and lightning, and you are gone.
blessed branches we've returned. Every second we spent in that hellish place was a second the great acorn drew closer. Interesting. You thought it was interesting, Quercus. Do you know what's interesting? Watching an entire world be strangled by the roots of doom. Seeing the giant races fall like leaves in frost. Hearing the screams of... I don't know what you're talking about. I am perfectly calm. Anyway, as interesting as that cold hellscape might have been, it does not solve our problem. We are here to stop the great acorn, not hide from it. It's already helping more than it knows, Quercus. The fate of the world depends on our ability to research a spell to protect Rivalon. We need to travel across the land gathering clues, experimenting with different magics, and come up with a spell to shield Rivalon from its doom. Of course, for us to do that, we must avoid being eaten by the servants of the Great Acorn, and that is where our big, foolhardy shield comes in. Quirkus! Quirkus! It thinks it can use magic at our level. I don't know if that's adorable or just sad. No! I am not going to share our magic with it. I don't care how much you like it, Quirkus. I... Very well. I cannot give it magic, but I can teach it how to forge one spell, if it will keep you happy. One! The squirrel reaches out, touching your foot with a delicate paw, and you feel your mind open. You can see the forces of magic and see how to combine them in a new way. There, maybe now your pet will have a fighting chance. Yes, yes, you're welcome, but can we please get on and save the world now? Speak if you wish to. You don't say. I too had the pleasure. Of course, when I say pleasure, I mean the distinct dishonor. What always happens? I'd rather not talk about it. She hesitates, but you can tell she wants to speak. The thing is... Tyrson Dilius, the old father, the Golden Leaf, he... He wants me to become the next Divine. Her eyes fix on some unseen thing of darkness. Beware of gods bearing gifts. Divinity. And yet, he treated me... Exactly. His was an exercise in power. Brutal, like all true power is. His was a lesson, meant to discipline, not to edify. Why would I obey such a god? <laughs> huh. 
How clueless you do sound. I'd say we should stop to talk, but I'm swamped. <laughs> Out of the frying pan and into... <sighs> you know what? You've heard that one before, so let's try a new one. Shite's all mucked up. Yeah, seems more to the point. Is that so? Look, I don't know where you've been and what you saw, but I believe you believe it. And I guess that's what matters, yeah? Flames are extinguished. Thank you. Hmm. Yes. The menacing skeletal guardian looks at you wearily, then yawns. So you dare defy the will of Blackers Rex, prepare to die, and so on and so forth. Let's get this over with. Law? But I obey our laws no longer. Their authority does not extend into the endless days of death. I hope this brings the discussion to an end. I don't like being roused from slumber, only to be greeted by such banality. I was a loyal servant of the Source King. I carry out his will in death, as in life, and all that sort of thing. Now, can we get down to the fighting? I was enjoying a lovely dirt nap before you helped those heretical pigs. Well, I wouldn't have said so if they didn't. Can't eat, sadly. Food goes right through you. Too bad, too, since those fiery hogs gave me a hankering for a good pork stew. She moans impatiently and taps her bony foot. Yes, yes, I know he's dead. I am still obligated to perform his wishes. He may not live, but the threat of his curse hangs over me. It is as you say. In any case, no curse could possibly be worse than this droning drivel. Be on your... <laughs> The Guardian chokes on her words, as if strangled by an invisible hand.
Extinguished. Thank you.
junk.
He looks up from his work and grins. Help you? May they no have the see. wisdom to return Gansa. them. And have you found them? Did you bring the soul jars? Go in Armadia's... Now that Gareth's returned. The young man you has like? abandoned the maps and now prepares Go his side. armor with happy urgency. He sees you approach. Doing great. Thank you. Divine blessings. You were missed. It's good to see Gareth safe and sound. Thank you again for all you've done for us. My welcome. Did you see? Gareth's back. I pray. He's here to take us home. Give them your protection as they search for the soul jars in their name. May they have the wisdom to return them to Divine blessings. It's good to see Gareth safe and sound. Strength to do what must be done. Appreciate your hospitality, esteemed Gradiana. Did you see? My welcome. Gareth's back. He's here to take us home. Here, but I'll not be sorry to see the back of these swamps. Thank you. Now with... Gather safe and sound. Did you see? 
Gareth's back. He's here to take us home.